Welcome to Bullet Point Nursing. My name is Dr. Goldstein. Let's get started. Today we're covering one of the very interesting concepts in nursing, which are standing orders. Standing orders essentially allow a nurse to make decisions and function outside of the traditional scope of practice of a nurse. Obviously that is never allowed, so let's elaborate on that. Let's use the example of oxygen. If a nurse is caring for a patient who suddenly develops a low oxygen level or hypoxia, and we can assess this on a pulse ox. If a patient's oxygen level drops, the patient requires oxygen. However, in the United States, oxygen is available by prescription only and must be ordered by a doctor or nurse practitioner. So how do we give this patient oxygen without having to call for a specific order? In this case, we have something that call, that's called standing orders that may kick in. A standing order can be understood as a blanket prescription that is written by the, a medical committee or the medical director of a facility or a unit, and it applies to everyone in that facility, unit, building, et cetera. So for example, it may say that we, the medical directors, hereby authorize any trained healthcare provider to administer oxygen to any patient in this building that is hypoxic. And it may go on to be more specific. It may say uh, that they are hypoxic at or below 93%, or it may say oxygen can be administered via nasal cannula two to six liters or non-breather 10 to 15 liters per minute. So depending on what standing order you're looking at is how specific it's going to be. But otherwise, in the absence of a standing order, a nurse would not be able to administer oxygen to a patient on their own authority. Standing orders or protocols allow this healthcare provider to administer life-saving treatment without having to get a specific order for this patient because essentially that order is already pre-written and in existence as a standing order. So a few things to know about standing orders. First of all, they may be apl applicable to the entire building and everyone in it or they may be specific to a unit or a, even a specific patient. So for example, patients that have um, units that take care of patients that are post-operative may have a specific set of standing orders that apply to any patient that is post-op in that unit. And it may be something like what you can do for nausea or what you can do for pain or fever or things like that. So let's look at another example of a standing order. Let's look at acetaminophen or Tylenol. So here's an order, acetaminophen, 650 milligrams, PO may be administered, PRN, for pain that is rated on a scale of, one to, uh, of zero to 10, pain rated a one to 10, up to and including pain rated a four out of 10. So this is a very common and very specific order that a nurse can use. So let's say we're on a med surge floor and a patient begins complaining of some pain. So depending what it is, you may be able to just go ahead and give the patient some Tylenol. Keep in mind, patients are used to this outside the hospital, they don't need a doctor's order. And in this event, with this standing order, you wouldn't need a specific doctor's order either because you have this standing order. Please note this standing order is specific. So you would not be able to, on your own authority as a nurse, change this from PO to correctal or IV or anything else. You would also not be able to give this Tylenol for a fever. If the patient develops a fever and you look at their orders and you see, well, there's acetaminophen for pain, that is for pain. You cannot administer it for a fever. You would need to call the provider unless there was an additional order as well. Also, in this case, this order has a specific parameter for the pain. The pain is a one out of 10 up to a four out of 10. If they're complaining of pain, a not eight out of 10, you cannot administer this Tylenol under this order because this order has specific parameters that are not effective as of right now. As you go through different nursing units, you may find very extensive protocols. For example, um, flight nurses have massively expansive standing orders for what they can and cannot do in many situations without getting a doctor or provider's approval right there at the bedside. Something like a med surge unit would have significantly less standing orders and less um, blanket authority on what they can do in a specific situation without having to have a provider at the bedside. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.